Very well. Before we do anything else, I want to make sure everyone knows everyone here. Also, this helps me when I'm going back and trying to figure out who attended. <laughs> so uh, I'll start off. I'm Dave Giberson. I'm an instructional design coordinator at Online Learning Pathways, at the district uh, support service for online education, and general uh, instructional technology used in distance education. Uh, let's see. Let's go first to uh, Caitlin. You in it? Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Caitlin, and I. Uh, I'm an illustration major. I just graduated actually last year with a bachelor's in illustration. <laughs> and Caitlin is coming to us from the library at Camp Pendleton. Caitlin works with my wife, who's the library director at Camp Pendleton. Thanks so much for coming in with us this morning. I hope you're fine. Well, yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. I'm uh, interested in teaching some of the uh, makerspace classes here at the library, and we do some uh, video editing, some of the other kind of stuff. So it's definitely cool to be able to sit in. Terrific. Well, we'll uh, look forward to working with you on that in the future. Okay, let's see. Uh, who else do we have on? Thank you, Caitlin. Um, all righty, how about Patricia? Thank you. Oh, Patricia's here, that's right. <laughs> Patricia's in the in the room. Let me get Patricia on the video here. Let me, what did I do? I oh, uh, I'm not on anymore. Just a second, we'll get it. Um, I can switch cameras. Zoom with, that we're using here allows multiple cameras. And let's see, that's probably going to be camera. Uh, uh, Michael, I'm going to use camera one then. There, go. there she is. All right. Just speak up for us, if you would, because the microphone's up here in the front. Okay, so I'm Patricia Reller, and I teach biology here at Miramar College. So I wanted to come here instead of being at home in my computer to enjoy the coffee and donuts. <laughs> <laughs> Rub it in. <laughs> All righty. Um, let's see. James, are you with us? James is kind of dark there. I'm not... Don't believe that's one of us here. James, if you uh, if you have a microphone, you want to chip in at any time, just let us know. Um, okay. Uh, Michael, how about uh, putting the camera on Pete? Hello, Dave, Caitlin, our other members who are here live and uh, watching us uh, synchronously. I'm Pete Miles. I'm professor of uh, business information technology. I have done a similar job to Dave, and I'm a big proponent of online education, and I plan on using it again as I retire this next year when I can teach online and not have to come to campus anymore. <laughs> so I'm learning all I can today. plan to tap all of Dave's knowledge as much as I can get out of it before I go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. How about Yolanda? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> quite a man. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Yolanda Thong. I am a instructional technician here at Miramar College for the Learning Resources Audiovisual Department. Thanks so much for coming. And Katie, let's get you on there too. <laughs> hi everybody, I'm Katie Palacios, another uh, instructional designer here for SDCC Online Learning Pathways. And um, I think you know, we're here to support you guys with instructional technology and Blackboard support as well, students and faculty. So come visit us uh, here at our offices or um, I'm on site at City College on Tuesdays from, no, not right, Mesa College Tuesdays from 1 to 4 and in the LRC 422 and then City College on Thursdays from 1 to 4 at City Site R101. So. If Miramar is not convenient, then um, we could do Blackboard and some video support, too. I've helped folks with video um, from those locations. So get in touch with me or Dave and let us know how we can help. Thank you. 
All right, I believe that's all of us. Now, let's get down to some serious playing with toys. Dave, no, there's some. There's a couple other people online. Oh, am I missing someone? I'm not sure who Eve Fernand is. Oh, yes. Online. There's another one, another person who's logged in as dad online. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, I wasn't in gallery view, thank you. So there's two, and then James we haven't heard from. I'm not sure if we're going to hear from him. But um, Eve Fernand was on chat. He's out there. He is programmer at district office. He's he's chiming in through the chat window. I'm not sure, not sure if you see that. Ah, here, uh, very good. I see. He also looks like he had a, a follow-up to the um, USB thumb drive question. Ah, check that. Okay, that's interesting. So we're using a phone that has a USB port on it. I'm guessing. Or an adapter, like on my, on my, uh, you know, on the Android, I have an adapter that I can put in. It's a USB I, adapter. Right, the, the Android phones have USB ports on them. That's what's the, the connector on the bottom or on the side, on the top, whatever, is a USB connector. So you can plug a thumb drive into that. Uh-huh. Uh, they sell them, they sell the regular adapters. Yeah. So regular hard drives that you can plug into the bottom of your cell phone. Right. Transfer right over. Well, yeah, because yeah. it's basically a USB port. Yeah. Steve Jobs saw fit not to provide us with that in the in the iPhone world, but uh, Android is quite a bit more friendly in that regard to a lot of things. A lot, particularly a lot of more sophisticated uses. But in terms of how you would copy. From the phone to the thumb drive, you got me. I've never tried that. Have you, Katie? Yeah, I can move files from my phone to my thumb drive on my phone. And uh, how, in general, is that done? Oh, when I go to the, I can navigate to my my files from my phone, and then I can move. I can choose to move files from my my files on my phone to an external a USB connector. Oh, really darn. Okay, that'd probably be worth a, a, a video. We'll, sure. we'll try to remember that, yeah, and get that out there. Very good. All right, I think we're caught up now. So, serious toy time. Let me get back to the pin that here so that it'll be in the recording. We're learning every week. All right, this is our little video studio. We have this available to any and all faculty and staff at the district. It lives here at Miramar. We actually have a separate room for it, uh, another little office across the hallway from where we are right now. We pulled it out today for this uh, event, so we'd have it out in the lab where more more people can see it. Those of you who are here can, are welcome to gather around if you like. It'll be a little easier to see. And uh, Michael has got the uh, best camera focused on it. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of what you're looking at here. Michael, would you mind uh, zooming in on the components as I talk about them? Yes, sir. Uh, thank you. The um, center of the studio is a little live video switcher that's coming in on right now. It's a very simple device. Oops. All right. Shut off myself there. Um, it, thank you, provides, uh, it takes inputs, standard NTSC or TV video type inputs from um, anything that has a, either a composite video or an S-video out. That'll make a little more sense to the, uh, the video folks here. And it's a four input switcher. It also has some audio mixer capability, which we're not going to be using today, but you can feed microphone audio and so on right through it. Um, 
the input that you're using is determined by the top row of numbered buttons. Right now we're on input one, which is a camera that Michael's using. If I go to two, there's input two, and there's folks gathered around. Input three is the document camera. Zoom out on that a little bit. Input four is something else that we'll get to in a little while. <laughs> I don't want to steal the thunder on that one. It's going off. <laughs> okay, and there we are back to input one. Uh, now, it's, that's really all you have to know to use this switcher. You come in, you sit down, and you can, you can record different video inputs live. So you can use one camera that might be on you. There I am. Another one might be on something else. You might, third one might be your document camera, which you can use to display documents that are already printed, or books. You can open a book and put it right there and, and display the book to your students. You can um, display three-dimensional objects. In my little Bluetooth keyboard I'm going to be using here. Right? You can just put a piece of paper down, and you can thank you so much. And you can just write on the paper, so that anything that you write, your students can see, like. like a, an equation, a mathematical notation. Think of it as a whiteboard hanging on the wall, or maybe like an old overhead projector that you could write on film or write on the surface of the projector. Only this gets sent wherever your students are. It's just another camera, and it is either recorded locally or sent out to the world as we're doing right now. Anything you draw here, to be, a, let's see, to be a chemical equation, anything you can draw on paper, you can send to your students. There are so many things that you might want to share with students on a, over a, uh, on a video or on a live link like this that you can't really put on a computer screen very easily. Things that it's just much more convenient to draw freehand or write out freehand. The document camera gives you that capability. Let's see. Let's go back to the first camera for a second. Michael, can you show the document camera? It's just sitting right next to us here. That's that uh, document camera that uh, came from Mesa that somebody threw away. As you can see, it's working very nicely. There's the actual camera. It's just suspended vertically over a stage where you put the anything you want the people on the other end to see. Thank you. All right, so that's the switcher. Let me go back to the switcher for a second. I love this, having a crew. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on this. You can do all sorts of tricks with the switcher. You can split your screen so that, oops, I didn't want to do that. I've got the same. If I have, I have two different rows of buttons that I can use to select video. One is take right now, and the other is take next. And I can use the little T handle here to transition between those. Nice fade, live. Or I can do things like split the screen and see both inputs at the same time. It compresses them vertically, but you can still see what's going on. Or I can even take all four inputs on the switcher at one time and distribute those. 
And there's some extra, there are different transitions that I can use, like a wipe, a vertical wipe, or a barn, uh, so-called barn door wipe, and things like that. And that's all done live without flicker, without uh, oops, get my finger out of the way there, <laughs> without um, any rolling of the picture, or anything like that. It uses what's called a frame buffer to prevent that. Um, this, so this is the heart of the system. Everything, all the different sources come into this, and you get to decide what comes out and goes on to whatever, wherever you want to send it by wire. We're sending this out, the, the signal out here. Oh, and this switcher costs, this is about the cheapest true live switcher you can buy. It's been available for about 15 years, as far as I know, but you can still buy it from data video, and it's about $1,000. The output from the switcher, video output, goes to a couple of different places here. Go to the, uh, Michael, to the, let's see, yeah, I've got you on there. Go to the recorder. We've got a digital video recorder that we use. It, this is basically just a, a video cassette recorder, but it uses the little tapes that I showed you earlier. Get the dust off of it. Gee, that's embarrassing. Um, <laughs> ah, that is. I sort of vacuumed it. <laughs> Let you zoom in that close. That's a good camera. And um, it's just a VCR. It records high definition video. Well. It can record a high-def video, but this setup is all standard definition. If you want to do this in HD, you're looking at twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars or more. Probably you all are spending more than that on your studio. For standard definition, though, you can still do this for under. This whole studio probably represents, including the computer, six or seven thousand dollars worth of equipment. So this is not something you're likely to have at home, but again, you can always come in here and use it, and we'll show you how to use it, and it's really not very complicated. It is actually the simplest way there is to create instructional video, because all you have to do is talk and bring stuff up on the computer. Uh, we don't have it set up right now, but normally we do have an input into the uh, switcher that is a computer screen. You have a computer in the uh, in the studio, and that can, we have an output from that computer through what's called a scan converter into NTSC video into the switcher, and it can be switched to and and uh, and become become part of your recording uh, as easily as any other video source. But in this case, of course, we're also feeding this live to a, an input that our video conferencing system, Zoom, can uh, accept. And to do that, we're using a little USB to video, or a USB capture, video capture device. The one that happens to work very well with Zoom is called a Dazzle. D-A-Z-Z-L-E. It's got a very characteristic appearance. You can still buy them. It's, a, it's an older piece of technology. It's been around again for 10 or 15 years. It is standard definition. But it just connects to any USB port, a USB 2 or USB 3 port, on a computer. And any video input, it also has audio inputs on it if you have, if you're sending audio as well, which we're not here. But if you're sending audio as well, it'll take that. And it will appear to software as a webcam, even though it's clearly not. <laughs> it looks like that to the software. And the soft, you can select it and uh, get any kind of video, really, in, any kind of video output into your computer. Anything that any device that will output either composite video Let's see if I can get this up where you can see it. I'll turn it around. Michael, can you zoom in on that? You know, there's the S video connector, but here's your composite video connector. It's very characteristic. 
It's a so-called RCA type connector with a yellow uh, code on it. That's composite video. Almost any video device that will output video has a composite out on it. You can just run that right in here and then run that right to Zoom and Zoom will then send it out to the world just as we're doing here. And the, that, the video we're watching right now is going through that device. You just can't see it <laughs> flowing through there. It's nothing but electronics through that device. So that's how we're doing that. And we'll leave off the other device for a moment. Other than that, we've just got a couple of speakers and our computer. Uh, so it's not a real complex setup, and it's obviously quite compact. Forgive me for the uh, what looks like the explosion, an explosion in a spaghetti factory. The wiring I didn't have time to really neaten up. It's never been one of my priorities. Uh, so Dave, I see the little mini tripod next to your keyboard. Yes. You could set that up next to the uh, switcher and basically put your cell phone camera there and be recording right you there. You could indeed. Though getting the cell phone video into the system would require a again a composite or an S out. You used to be able to do that from an iPhone. I'm not sure you're able to anymore. I'd have to go look at the Apple Store to see if they still have that composite video out capability. I'm pretty sure you can do it on an Android phone. You just have to buy the right cable. But yeah, this is just a tiny little desktop tripod that you can use for any small video camera. So it would it would probably hold that camcorder over there as well. Okay, good. Thank you. you bet. And there are slightly larger versions of this as well that are even more robust that will definitely hold things like those camcorders and so on. I have one of those. If we get a chance I'll show you here in a minute. Do you know where you would purchase one? Fries, you can buy them right off the right off the rack at Fries for sure, or Amazon. Good question. So that's the basic layout of what we're using here. It's very simple to use and um, takes maybe 20 minutes to learn to use. All you have to do to use it is email us or call us and make an appointment to come in. Uh, we'll spend the first 20 minutes of your appointment showing you how to use it, and then we'll get out of your way and just let you record. And you can record, you can record yourself, you can record uh, your PowerPoint presentation coming in off the computer, you can record stuff from the document camera, and you can switch back and forth live just as you would in a, in a live lecture and capture it all either to Zoom remember we're recording this on Zoom right now, or to digital videotape, and then we can help you upload it, from, capture it and upload it from the digital videotape. I don't want to spend a lot of time showing you how to do that right now because that's something we would help you with when you came in. Just want to make sure you understand the capability we have. What's the little device next to your mouse on the right? Where you um, the plugged in? The, uh, yeah. that just a <laughs> that's part of the next set okay. of toys we're going to use. Right. That, uh, let's see, let me get back to Michael. Michael. Oh, I see, I can put that probably up on the docking camera. Question that was just asked. Well, actually, Michael, you may be able to see it better. All right. <laughs> this thing. That thing. It's about, it's a little hard to get scale here. Let me put a finger in there. It's about two or three times the size of a thumb drive, and it has a connector on the end that is uh, right here, you can't tell, but it's an HDMI connector. That is a computer. It's a full-fledged Windows 10 computer. Um, it has two USB ports. It does require, it has to be plugged in, it has a power connector, it has to be plugged into the wall. Um, it has a quad-core, uh, low-end Intel processor in it. Uh, I think they call it an Atom, but it is a quad-core processor. It will do most anything you can do with a desktop computer just a little slower. It will stream high-definition video. 
we're using it as a uh, background video source here for something we're going to look at in a moment. But um, it's a full up computer. Let me wake it up here. It's asleep. I have a, what did I do with my uh, I'm sorry, what is it called uh, again? In, oh, it's called an in, thank you. It's an Intel Compute Stick. I forgot to say that, thank you. <laughs> it costs, I think, $153 on Amazon. It's just come out. Be very careful, though, if you're interested in this. There, there's an older version that they're selling off very cheaply right now. You don't want that. It's very anemic. This is the second generation Intel Compute Stick 2016. And I've been able to do almost anything with this that I can do with my, with my desktop computer. And I've got a little keyboard here, a little Bluetooth keyboard that works with it. Though you can plug a normal keyboard and mouse into it through the USB port. But it also has Bluetooth, so this allows me to use the USB ports for something else. You can, of course, get Bluetooth keyboards that are much bigger than this. But I bought the thing primarily as what I like to call a Pico presentation tool. I can take my PowerPoint presentation or my videos or anything else I want to present at a conference or a meeting with me in my pocket. And I can put the the keyboard in the other pocket, and I can walk in, and I, I do have to have the AC adapter. I have to plug it into the wall, but then I can plug it directly into the projector. Hmm. And I have, a, I have everything on my own computer. I have to worry about, oh, does, do they have the right version of Java? Do they have the right player or whatever? Everything's right on my computer, and I can then run the presentation from there. It also has audio outputs. Uh, through Bluetooth that you can use. You get a little Bluetooth audio adapter, it's about that big, that will plug into the audio inputs on the projector or on the in the room, whatever. Uh, presentation venue, the presentation venue has. And from that, you can run your presentation. Uh, Mike, if you pull back the uh, Windows, the thing is outputting to the monitor just above it. Get this out of the way if I can. Uh, this one. There we are. There's the monitor. That's the output from the compute stick. I can use my keyboard to control that. Got a little touch pad on as well. Full blown Windows 10 computer. It's a little slower than what you're used to but it does amazingly well considering the size of it. We're using that for something that we'll see here in a moment. 